Let's discuss the periodic table for first-time chemistry students. Most periodic tables have a noticeable staircase on the right side, signifying the division of the metals from the nonmetals. The elements to the left of the staircase are metals, while the elements to the right of the staircase are nonmetals. The elements along that division, those green elements on your screen, are also known as metalloids. They contain properties of both metals and nonmetals. Hydrogen, located on the far upper left hand corner, is also a nonmetal. Horizontal rows of elements are called periods. Period 1 contains hydrogen and helium only. Period 2 starts with lithium and ends with neon. Vertical columns of elements are called groups or families. Some families actually have names. On the far left, you'll find the alkali metals. It's important to remember hydrogen is not part of this family. Next to the alkali metals, you'll find the earth alkali metals. For nonmetals, there are two groups that have names. On the far right, you'll find the noble gases. And next to them, in group 17, you'll find the halogens. In another video, I explained the common charges on monatomic ions and the common charges for the families. Here is a summary. Now, let's look at the center of the table. These are called the transition elements or transition metals. This includes the two rows towards the bottom. The transition elements are special. They can carry multiple charges. For example, iron can exist as a plus two charge or a plus three charge. As for the two rows at the bottom, these are called the lanthanum and actinum series. They actually fit in series six and seven. Let's zoom in for a better look. You'll notice there's a gap between elements 56 and 71 and elements 88 and 103. The entire lanthanum series fits between elements 56 and 71 and the actinum series fits between elements 88 and 103. Finally, what information is in the periodic table? Some tables can be very busy. Here are some of the basics. The elemental name and the elemental symbol. The symbol can be one or two letters with the first letter always uppercased. You'll also find the atomic number. The atomic number is the number of protons in the nucleus. And you'll find the atomic weight, which is the average of the isotopes for that element.